and that's the whole thing about the gardens and, and why they work is that the kids can feel it and touch it and smell it, and it's that experience. And so the kids, for this first hour, got to choose whether they wanted to do a wellness unit, which included nutrition and yoga and um, cooking, or they could do um, Spanish or performing arts, or there's a whole list of things to choose from. And I have to tell you that the wellness component was by far the most popular. We had to you know, close the, the cap on it, and parents were knocking down the door to try to get their kids in. And it's been going every Wednesday morning since August 26th. And so the first part is the nutrition education. And it's, um, they, we kind of break them off into three groups, K through one, two through three, four through five. And how we worked it is that um, at the same time the nutrition education is going on in the morning, cooking is going on, and yoga is going on. So, for example, whatever, if I was teaching something about fiber, um, the person who was cooking in the cafeteria with the kids is making something like bran muffins, or something that has fiber in it. So the kids learn about it, they walk down the hall, and then they eat what they just learned about um, in the last 15 minutes. So it works really well. And, you know, working with kids, the fourth and fifth graders, they can understand a lot. It's great to teach to them. Not that it's not great to teach the kindergartners, but you know, sometimes if I can just get them to not fall off the beanbags on the chair, then I feel like I've been really successful. <laughs> and you know, you wonder, is any of this sinking in? But if I can just have them come away with, you know, one thing that they remember, one thing that they bring home and tell their parents, or, or that they can just think about when they're making food choices in the cafeteria or at home or after school. This was, a, this was really fun. This was with the fifth graders, and they had to sell their vegetable, and one of them was cauliflower, one of them was sweet potato, one was edamame, and one kid had not tried any of those three vegetables. And whether you liked it or not, you had to sell it to the rest of the classroom, and you had to tell why it was good for you and what nutrients were in it. Um, and it was, it was great. They learned a lot. And here's one, like, we talk about food and mood and depression, and this was one on, um, they had to draw a picture. These were the younger kids. Um, when I feel sad, I like to eat. When I feel happy, I like to eat. When I feel tired, I like to eat. And it just got them thinking about why they made certain food choices. So this is the cooking. This guy doesn't look very excited, but um, this is a sweet potato. They were making in here. They're mixing it up. And the ones that are cooking are think it's so great, you know, they're in charge, they're making something great for the other group that's coming in. And then they're divvying it out so when this other class comes in, they'll have it available for them to try. And the other group is doing yoga in the gym. So another thing. Um, and you guys feel free to come up and look at this. We just put together a little cookbook of this program with all of the recipes of what's been made in the cafeteria and then the nutrition tidbits of why those foods are good for you. Like we made kale chips, which they all thought they're never going to try it, and they liked it. And, um, and then the importance of kale and green leafy foods and extra calcium. And, um, so that just came out. So just to wrap up, um, the benefits of the Garden Table program are pretty evident. Hands-on experiential learning, um, helping kids to develop healthy eating habits, helping them to understand the link between um, the food that they eat and what happens to their body and um, you know what's going to happen down years from now. Um, the environmental awareness they can get from planting foods, working with the soil, working with composting, the school and parent enrichment and what it's done to the culture of this school has been great. And the community involvement of getting people to come in and help the kids become excited about what they're doing. And the challenge is, of course, money. Money is hard depending on what school you are, what you want to do. Um, volunteer recruitment is hard as well as their commitment. Sometimes, you know, volunteers and parents are really excited and they want to get in there, especially at the beginning of the year, and they sign up for all these activities. But when it comes down to, we need you out here to help harvest these vegetables that have to be harvested before the next day, then they might not have the time or they're busy with something else. Um, program scheduling, how do we get you know, 580 kids out here so all of them can be doing it within the context of what they're learning in the school day? So the scheduling can be really challenging. Um, and the established curriculum can come first. You know, This is not something that's required. This is just an enrichment. Um, and uh, also, how do you get nutrition education in the classroom? You know, it's always a challenge. 
And just to end, the goal of the Garden Table program, a lifetime of wellness is supported by healthy eating habits built on childhood experiences of growing food, learning about nutrition, preparing, and eating fresh meals. So you guys have... only in the Boulder area? Or? Yeah, it is right now, yeah. Okay, so are they considering broadening their scope, or are they willing to work with other school districts and kind of give other school districts ideas of how to get these things started? Yeah, you know, the biggest challenge for the Grow Foundation is money. Right. Um, and if we had money, you know, we could hire all sorts of people to do all sorts of things. But there's no reason why any other school in the state or in the nation can't take this model and run with it. You know, and we can provide you information on what that looks like and go to the website and, yeah. You mentioned earlier about middle school and potentially high school projects as well as those So the question was, um, what would a middle school or a high school program look like? Um, it wouldn't be garden focused, it may be community focused, where like high school students go out and help in something that is nutrition or environmentally focused, maybe at the university or within individual businesses, maybe it's um, a work study program, something that's more geared towards that age group. And again, it's still being developed and um, we're trying to just work with all elementary schools. There's 29 elementary schools and um, so as soon as we get that up in a little bit stronger that we'll focus on the middle and high school. What about the soil? Did you did that part of the program did you talk about the components of the soil and the plants? The you mean the, the uh, components of the soil? The soil well we were supposed to do soil testing last Monday with the classes and it snows. And this is a perfect example. Like you have your volunteers set up and then it snows and what do you do? And so then you have to you know, postpone it. And I have not done the soil testing yet, but uh, the person who's in charge of that area was going to do it for the first time and, you know, measure out whatever it is they're measuring out and show the kids what you need to add. And they were bringing in mushroom compost and the farmers donate things to us. And they're very supportive, the farmers are. So the question is, how challenging is it to change the kitchen to accommodate scratch cooking? Well, I don't work in the nutrition services office, but um, it's extremely challenging, painfully challenging. Um, you know, people are going to quit. You know, change is really hard. People are going to have to work harder for less money. Um, you know, there's a lot of resistance. Also, um, vending machines bring in a lot of money for extra programs at schools. So you cut those and the schools don't have as much money. I mean, it's a sad thing to say. Um, and the other thing is you have to train the kitchen staff. I mean, many of them, you know, they're, they're paid very low wages. They basically have been taught to cut open boxes, put things in microwaves. And so you need people out there that are really trained cooks, you know, to, to make things from scratch. So um, it means getting your um, school districts, nutrition services office involved. share it with each other like this we had zucchini that was this big and the fifth graders made zucchini bread and it was the smell was wafting down the hallways from the the um, teacher um, lunchroom and they shared that with the fourth graders next door to them so it's you know this community involvement within the school too I guess I would assume maybe the vending machines are um, they have to be stocked with certain types of food but would it be possible to get vending machines that you can stock with your own food then I mean, or like would there food? not be enough turnover with the scratch food in the vending machines? Oh, you mean food they make in the in the cafeteria? Right. That they would then like put in the